Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to do a lesson on behaviors. And there are basically two general groups of behaviors. One is innate and one is learned. So basically the difference is innate behaviors um, you actually are born with knowing how to do. And the majority of these are based on survival. Okay. Um, so examples that they have up here are suckling in mammals and crying. So think about if you've seen any videos of a baby being born, one of the first things the doctor does is make sure the baby is crying. And then they also stick their finger in the baby's mouth to make sure they know how to like begin suckling. And of course, obviously, both of those are for um, survival. Okay, so the first one I want to talk about is migration. Um, this is when animals move from place to place. Usually they are seeking uh, more food, warmer climate, or both. And then sometimes it is for reproduction. Now keep in mind, unless something terrible happens, it is a two-way trip. Like they have all intentions of um, traveling back. Okay, so um, there are several kinds of animals that migrate. Obviously a lot of herding animals like you see on the screen do. Uh, whales migrate, birds butterflies, a whole bunch of different species, okay? And they take their cues from the length of the day and stuff like that. Okay, the second one is hibernation, which you guys are well aware of what it is. I just want to make sure you understand, like, the animals are not technically asleep. What happens is, is their body uh, greatly reduces its metabolism, um, so they don't require much food or nutrition. Okay, so again, they take their cues from temperature changes, the length of the day, sunlight, all those kind of things. It's mostly in mammals. So you see that little field mouse in there hibernating. Okay, all right, this one is a little bit harder for kids to understand. This is more in reptiles and amphibians. It's called estivation. Um, it's kind of like the opposite of hibernation, meaning it happens in the summertime. And since these animals are ectothermic, which is the fancy word for cold blooded, they can't control their body temperature. So if this little toad here were out in the sun when it was 105 degrees, then his body could potentially become 105 degrees. Okay, so usually animals will find a shady spot or they'll get um, under a log or stay in the water and it just looks like they're motionless for hours and hours at a time. They're just trying not to overheat. Okay, that's estivation. All right, and then the last one under the um, innate behaviors is called circadian rhythm. And this literally means around a day, circadian circadian means around a day so basically it's a 24-hour pattern of behavior so for most people awake during the day asleep at night or if you know someone on night shift theirs would be the exact opposite awake during the night and asleep during the day um so flowers open during the day close at night owls etc um and people realize circadian rhythm if you travel especially to a time zone that is very different than yours um my husband had to travel to japan for work one time and they are actually 13 hours ahead of us okay so if it was like 8 p.m here it was like 9 p 9 a.m the next morning in japan and that threw them for a loop Okay, so that's an example of circadian rhythm. All right, so now we're going to talk about the learned behaviors. So these are some that you pick up over your lifetime. And of course, a lot of times this is taught by parents, but it could also be um, learned just by practicing, practice, and practice. Okay, so the first one is called habituation. I hope you see the word habit in there. So with the animal kingdom, they kind of get used to things and they realize that the other object is not going to hurt them or harm them. So they kind of ignore it. So the best example is a scarecrow. Like farmers used to put scarecrows in the field. And for a long time, the crows would stay away from it because they thought it was a person and they would stay away. But then if they see that the scarecrow doesn't move, for days on end, they're like, hey, that thing's not going to hurt me. And then you may even see pictures of the crows sitting on the scarecrow. Okay, another example is with a horse in a big city. When they first bring horses to cities, if they're not used to it, they have the blinders and different things on them um, So until they get used to it. So this is basically getting used to something. Okay, and I will put links to this video on Google Classroom after after my lesson. 
Okay, the next one is imprinting. This is found mostly in birds. And what they do is as soon as they hatch, they kind of mimic the first animal that they see, which of course is usually their mama, but not all the time. And that's how, you know, the ducks learn to be ducks, the geese learn to be geese. And they can follow everything that their mama does, flying, eating, swimming, all that. And there have been many stories and movies done where the ducks um, imprint on a person. And I think Fly Away Home is one of them. Um, and if you don't like correct that within a certain amount of time, they'll never, they will always reject their mother. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, the next one is classical conditioning. This is basically what you and I would call training. And the animal associates an event with a stimulus. So as an example, when we train our dogs to do tricks and stuff, a lot of us would train them if they do what you ask them to do, you give them a treat, right? And there are some people that train their dogs or other animals with punishment as well. Okay, so like if they don't do something right, they hit them with a leash or something like that. And you can always tell what animals are conditioned with a treat and then the other ones that are conditioned with something um, bad. Okay, um, so Pavlov did an experiment. He was a psychologist or psychiatrist. I can't remember which one. And he did an experiment with a ringing of a dinner bell. And every time he rang a di dinner bell, he would put food in front of the dog and he would notice that they would salivate. And then eventually he would ring the bell without putting the food there and the dog still salivated. So again, I'll put the link to that um, on Classroom, okay? All right, the next one is courtship. This is basically anything an animal does to attract a mate. So when the male peacock displays his feathers like this, um, male billy goats will stick their head between their legs and like pee on their beard and then strut between all the females. That sounds like a great time, doesn't it? Um, some other birds do dances. Uh, this one here, I don't know if you can see it, but he is giving her a fish and she will mate with the one who gives the biggest fish. So talk about a gold digger. Okay, that's courtship. All right, aggression is basically any kind of behavior that gains control over another animal. So it could be snarling or showing their teeth. Um, uh, this gorilla like beating on his chest or a mountain goat that rams into a rock or some other structure. Okay, um, cats do that like when they sh um, arch their back and like stand their fur up. A lot of time, a lot of animals do it by showing their teeth. Okay. All right, the next one is territoriality. And this is when organisms protect the area they live in. Um, it could be because they have a mate nearby, a family. Um, they could be protecting their lair, their cave, um, or it could be just simply a food source. Okay, so this is why our dogs like pee on everything in our yard or uh, cats and big cats do that also. Um, if lions fight off other lions, um, this bear standing on its hind legs, he's just trying to use aggression to show you that this is his territory. Okay. And then trial and error is basically practicing, 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 try and try and again, doing tasks over and over continually until you get better at them. Okay. When I played tennis in high school, our coach made us serve at least 100 times every practice. So then hopefully, you know, the, the thing is, is you'll get better. Just like I'm sure when you practice basketball, you have to do free throws and other layups and drills. If you're practicing running cross country, you're going to run more and more and more. And then you get better and better. Okay. Same concept. That's trial and error. All right. And then the last one, I believe that's the last one. Yep. Um, communication is how organisms talk to one another. Um, I do want you to realize, though, that humans are the only species that have a true language. OK, now we know that chimps and other things can learn a sign language, but that is not their true language. All right. So obviously we do that through talking. Most animals will speak to each other through pheromones or signals. OK, so as an example, I don't know if you can see it. See how this bee is very blurry. That means he actually found food. So he comes back to the hive and he does something called a waggle dance. And that is telling the other bees, hey, I have found food. OK, and I'll post that video there so you can see that. 
Um, these ants, when they find food, they actually leave an invisible chemical trail on the ground um, so other ants can find it. And this is probably what's happening here. Where you can also do that with ant poison. Um, they'll find it and they'll leave a trail back to it and then all the other ants will eat it and hopefully die if they're in your house. Okay, and then other animals might give signals, like the meerkats have certain signals when they're guarding the prairie and different things like that. Okay, all right, so let's review these real quick. The innate behaviors, an owl sleeping during the day and hunting at night. If you see anything day-night, that's circadian rhythm, okay? Whales swimming from polar waters to tropical waters during the year, that would be migration. Okay, squirrels eat a bunch in the fall and sleep all winter. That would be hibernation. Remember, it's not truly sleep, okay? A snake lays on a log for hours on end during hot summer days. So that would be estivation. And then a flower open during the day and closes at night. So day-night is circadian rhythm, okay? All right, then on this screen, a young duck mimics his mother as soon as he hatches. That one is imprinting. A tennis player serves 250 times a day. That would be basically trial and error. A horse gets used to being in the city. That would be habituation. Think of it becoming a habit. A parrot is given a treat for saying a word. You are conditioning that parrot. And then a mouse decreases the amount of time it takes to go through a maze. That would also be trial and error. Okay, now that could be conditioning also um, depending on if there was a um, treat waiting for him at the end. Okay. All right, so if you guys would complete the Google form on behaviors, that'll be it for today. Um, as always, email me or call me if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you.